I will try not to overstretch your patience uh, with my uh, few remarks, which actually will take up the image, or we'll start out with the image we ended, uh, namely the metaphor or um, the image of the freedom of the high seas. And I will try to somehow give a uh, frame um, of our discourse um, here, starting out indeed uh, with a historical reference. And uh, this goes like this. Board the ships, philosophers, exclaims good old Friedrich Nietzsche in 1882, um, addressing and evoking rather paradoxically we, namely the we of the homeless. And as we all know, instead, in, uh, instead of boarding um, a real ship, and as we know from his letters, he deplored his old mother to send him to send him some warm underwear to the cold zones of Switzerland. Well, a hundred years earlier, um, Johann Gottlieb Herder boarded a ship as well. I got so tired with everything, with my stiffy life, and I instantly have to leave my shitty fucking hell. Life and guess where he's heading for? He's heading to uh, Paris and he's trying to get rid of um, the old routine. Reaching out otherness is um, the motto. And already on the ship, he, he uh, starts to scribble his notes on the uh, origins of humankind, um, having the goal, obviously, to inscribe thought into the library's depositories of knowledge. It's not a coincidence um, that Adorno Horkheimer see the Odyssey as a founding text of Western thought and the dialectics of enlightenment. Well, from Greeks, uh, peripatetic philosophers, and moves and thought moves. Heidegger's Holzwege, a path that we know leads to nowhere included. Franz Hessel, Walter Benjamin's Flaneur to Georg Simmel's reflection on the sociological forms, the relation of mobility and sedentariness to Robert Parks, 1925, the mind of the hobo, reflections upon the relation between mentality and locomotion. So mobility um, movement is in Western white male logocentric um, tradition designed as a practice of freedom. It is set against motionlessness, dull familiarity, soil, backwardness, peasant life, restrictions, tradition, and we know this um, uh, dichotomy to be between modernity and uh, tradition and community from the sociological um, tradition. And of course, uh, the thinker, the philosopher, the intellectual uh, belongs to the realm of freedom, uh, the ones who crosses the borders, aims at thinking the hetero unthought. Movement in this tradition as a sign of subversion, dynamism, transgression, the trans becomes modern Western paradigm in this tradition. And the migrant, the one who moves, uh, might become a hero or a liberator, or even the foreign founder of the demos as well. It is no coincidence this, that the use of nomadic metaphors in theories from nomadology uh, uh, employed by Deleuze Guattari and the pledge for a, quote, uh, nomadic space without property or enclosure, a call from outside against fixation of the state. Wilhelm Flusser, um, Eloge of the Nomad, um, the free fluctuating multitude, uh, Tony Negri and Hart. Post-colonial thought situates um, itself at or from the border. Think of Homi Baba, um, the articulation of cultural difference is situated at the margins of modernity. To Edward Said, um, Walter Mignot, Leon, uh, to Chakrabarti, thought is telling the story from its borders. So what is at stake here is, despite quite different notions, is the other thought um, is a epistemologically, um, ep epistemological creolization or the provincializing of Europe. Useless to say um, that the intellectual imagines himself as a wonder, a cosmopolitan, a being that is home in homelessness. 
Nowadays, we are on the move, states Zygmunt Bauman. Metaphors uh, 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 as flux, liquidity, scapes are to grasp with the modern experience of individualization, global capitalist society where everything is indeed exchangeable and commodified in, uh, in a flux. Not to speak that art is no longer an art of a hung, an ethical endeavor, um, but is again to destabilize, to uproot, to question, push the frontiers, to provocare, uh, to provoke as an ethically founded call to action. Well, starting out um, from um, these remarks, and um, I'm almost tempted for a grand hommage uh, uh, aux sédentaires, uh, for limits, for setting limits and uh, limitations, uh, being somehow a devil's advocate. Uh, however, I will, uh, won't come back to this. Um, let me briefly make uh, five points which seem to me, which ran out through um, our conversation uh, this uh, afternoon and a little bit of uh, our conversations during um, the last few days. So <clears throat> one of the big themes which we had uh, today as well is, of course, and that's my first point, um, obviously the border and the question of um, national sovereignty. And there are, uh, well, in literature as well, um, are more, more or less two versions or types of argument uh, which are uh, constantly re proposed. Um, this is the one who says uh, mobility that um, undermines somehow classical um, sovereignty, the so-called Westphalian grammar, as uh, Ben Habib called it, versus, uh, versus notions that hold that indeed nations still matter. Huh? Craig uh, Calhoun, um, even if you speak of the national, the supranational or transnational practices, the um, reference is still to the national polit political or uh, juridical um, settings. Second point or um, second topic which we have addressed um, here in uh, very interesting, very in intense um, ways is indeed the question of uh, border space or the relations between border space and territory. And um, again, here we have one version which uh, holds that we have to speak of deterritorialization. Uh, related to globalization, um, to sophisticated technical um, uh, devices, cyberspace, and so on, and so on. And what is said here, what is done here is space, um, the old sedentariness, the old uh, simul, uh, simul, uh, uh, space is set against uh, flows, networks, networks, um, societies. I come back to this metaphor of, floor, of flows in a minute. Um, so we have to deal with this relation, the deterioration um, aspect, and by the way, I cannot think of any human action as not always already being uh, spaced and uh, placed. The social, the political, uh, the religious, in my view, are uh, localized. Um, they are always localized. Uh, they do have significant uh, places, be it uh, the polis, or the agora, uh, the synagogue, or uh, ethics as habitat. Um, so we have the deterritorialization against, set against the so-called re-territorialization, the re-inscription somehow um, of space. And I think what we haven't really touched upon um, during these days is the re-inscription of space um, in, for example, imagined communities, in uh, so-called long-distance nationalists, um, the insistence indeed of uh, difference of identitarian uh, communities and their uh, cultural uh, traditions, or even populist invocation of a Heimat, um, and of course the new, old new geopolitics, uh, good old Schmidt, the namas of uh, the namas of the uh, of, of the earth. So. Um, third point uh, or third uh, big questions we have um, addressed is then the border and uh, the relation to materiality and non-materiality. So what is happening here? Um, on one hand, it is said we have the dematerializing um, aspects and on the, so the digitalized border from afar, the war from afar, and uh, the war machine 
uh, the war machine against migrants and mobile people um, as well, which comes to us from afar. On the other hand, we have this materialization, and Steve has shown us uh, some really forceful uh, forceful images of the materialization uh, of what is done to the human body um, <clears throat> and has shown us forcefully uh, the materiality uh, of uh, what's happening. So in my view, and I think uh, most of the uh, interventions uh, during those days, um, have set against these kind of dualisms and uh, really in accordance with, I think, with most papers here, um, in my view, um, have engaged with the complex um, interplay between the D and the re and, and, and uh, so on. They, we have dealt with the, um, the high complexity, um, the not even um, a central logic, not even linearity of logics of a various of variety of actors, contradictory um, logics, and uh, let's say as well we should include um, contingency here. And uh, I think the question is uh, still remains uh, who are really the actors? So what is this complex interplay? Who runs the whole machine? Who runs even the digitalized, uh, the virtual uh, machine? And who produces what and uh, how? And let's not forget the productive aspects um, of uh, the Foucaultian uh, notions of power. Huh? It's not just control, surveillance, but uh, power is also productive. Um, and indeed, let's not forget um, what is um, at play, in my view, is um, the setting in motion of a new geopolitics. Um, uh, fourth point um, that we have um, touched upon is indeed um, the border and new modes of uh, gouvernementalité and uh, governance in the context of neoliberalism. And here I would, um, <clears throat> or I would like to make the point is uh, that against um, some this per per pervasive um, depolitization uh, met uh, or uh, displayed, um, let's not be thrilled uh, by these um, theological um, devices or the um, so-called solutions of technology. Uh, what, in my view, um, has to be done is really an accurate engagement uh, with the question of the political, the political, uh, and therefore ask again, um, I, come, uh, I come to an end in a moment, um, this is one of my central points really, is um, the relation between the border, the political and ethical um, questions. Um, which have been somehow hided or disguised by these um, new modes of uh, governance. The question, namely, um, of cosmopolitan um, practices. Uh, we have addressed these en passant, uh, but I think it would be worth in the future um, for a common project as well uh, to have a look um, at this. So the question that in my view remains uh, open is how is uh, or how could uh, political action and activism be um, possible? How is it possible without the reiteration of inclusion, exclusion, that is, of borders? And how can antagonism which is at the very heart of the political, be um, conceptualized, given uh, all these various um, dimensions we have um, seen. Um, so I am, as we all know, and I, I do not have the time to go um, into here, uh, to, to go further uh, to these questions, but um, if you look at current uh, ph um, philosophical uh, political debates, they gravitate around three main narratives. One is egalitarian liberalism, one is more or less communitarian uh, version, renewed of uh, renewed versions of a critical cosmopolitanism, and finally, and following more or less close to Jacques Derrida, post-colonial uh, perspectives who seek to deconstruct uh, the foundations of political um, theory and its underlying uh, tensions. 
Um, however, I think what is really um, uh, en jeu here, uh, so what has to be in, uh, or what we should engage here, is one of the fundamental question, um, this is a political question, and the tension uh, between uh, restrictions uh, of uh, membership, um, uh, the tension between um, universalism and particularism, and uh, obviously the question of um, antagonism. And here some versions, I, can't, I do not have the time here, uh, but what really comes into play is as well the question of uh, distributive justice um, here. So what um, is um, in our times, and or what is the outcome uh, of uh, the three days for me personally, is um, that we really should think about, uh, or we have the necessity uh, of a rereading or reinventing crucial concepts uh, of freedom, uh, justice, and democracy, and um, therefore um, as well the political as somehow being bounded, fenced, um, so we have to move. Uh, in these, we have to move, or we <coughs> newly have to set boundaries and uh, limits, as um, as Etienne uh, Baliba uh, remarks, um, that uh, the political space has necessarily um, some relation uh, to boundaries. It presuppose a geography of membership and representation of, constituency, of constituencies um, and locations or sites of uh, power. And I think um, really the task should be um, to work within the realm of repolitization of uh, the border. And here I have to stop, unfortunately. Thanks.